writing proportional equations. And so we already talked about some equations and we did some basic equation work, but now we're going to figure out how to write them. So all proportional equations are in one specific format, but first let's talk about a little bit of vocabulary. Okay. We're going to just talk about x. x is the input in an equation. Remember that's the thing that goes inside of our function machine. We put it in the function machine and we wait to see what comes out. Y is our output in an equation. So that's the thing that's like we put the X inside that function machine box. Okay, so I can kind of draw if I... I'm not sure I have the skills to draw this very well, but... Remember, so x goes in and y comes out and then this is the actual function. So this is like whatever we do to it, right? So in a proportional relationship, we're always going to multiply it by something. We're never doing anything else other than multiplying. We're not squaring, we're not square rooting, we're not adding, subtracting, we're only multiplying. Okay, so all uh, proportional relationships look a certain way. Okay, so I think we'll use green here. All proportional relationships or proportional equations look like this. It's y equals K times X. Try to get that to focus there a little better. There we go. Y equals K times X. And K is going to be your constant of proportionality. And remember, we find that constant of proportionality by what we want divided by where we start. And since now we have these, num these letters to define those things, we can say that we find K by Y, that's what we want, divided by where we start, Y over X. Now we can draw a little table over here and remind ourselves x is always on this side and y is always on this side. So we start here and then we ask ourselves, what did we multiply by to get from one side to the other? And that's k, right? That's our constant of proportionality. So whatever we multiplied x by to get to y, that's what we did, or that's k. And so then anytime you have a table, um, we can find that K and we can write it. So let's take a look at an example like that. We'll write example here. Okay, so imagine you have this proportional relationship, X and Y, we have one, three, two, six, three, nine, Oops, see, there we go. All right, so we have this proportional relationship and we want to figure out, we need to calculate K and then we need to write the equation. Okay, so the first thing we do is calculate K. So we do Y over X, and since it's proportional, we could do that for any of them. So we could do three over one, six over two, or nine over three which with any of them ends up three over one, which is three. So our constant of proportionality is three. So now we're gonna write our equation. So we write our equation by saying, we can just read this like a sentence, right? So I say here's x, x times what equals y. 
Well, I know x times 3 equals y. So I'm going to say, read it like a sentence. x times what equals y? Ask yourself that. And so now we're going to write it. x times 3 equals y. Now remember, mathematicians don't really like it written that way, so if you wrote it that way on your test, I would take it, but mathematicians really prefer the number to be in front of the letter. So we're going to write 3x equals y. And this gets, a lot of people get confused because they think they're multiplying the y by the 3, but we're not. Remember, so you've got to read it like a sentence. Think about left to right. x times what equals y. And then we get 3x equals y. And that means I take x, I multiply it by 3, and I get out y. So now I can use this equation to solve problems. But before I put a problem out, let's go ahead and talk about what all proportional relationships look like, or re equations. Remember we had this, all equations, proportional equations look like this, okay? So um, we, already, we already looked at what they all look like. So let's look at, these are proportional. And these are non-proportional. Okay, so proportional relationships look like y equals 2x. y equals x, because remember, that's the same as y equals 1x, right? There's a little invisible 1 there. Um, even y equals x over 2. Because remember, this is the same as y equals 1 half x. We'll say this equals the same as y equals 1 x, okay? Do you see how it still is y equals and then some number time e times x? Now, the number could be a fraction or a decimal, and sometimes it's going to look like it's being divided, okay? But really, it means um, it's y equals some number times x every single time. We never add, we never subtract. We never square or anything else. We only multiply. Okay, and then some people say, well, what if it's x times 3? Hypothetically, that's still right, right? Because we're still just multiplying. It's okay that the 3 is after that. We still would prefer it is written like this, okay? But if it's written like this, it's still the same thing because it's still multiplication. So we can only multiply. So let's look at some examples that are not proportional. So y equals 2 divided by x. See how this is, because this is the same as y equals 1 over x times 2. See how the x is not in the numerator? We're not actually multiplying by x, we're multiplying by 1 over x, so that's not okay. y equals x cubed, that is not proportional because we're cubing. y equals 2x plus 1. Not proportional because, see, we did some addition. If we just multiplied, we were fine. But as soon as we start adding and subtracting, we're in trouble. Even y equals x minus 5. Not proportional. Okay? All of these are not proportional. Even y equals the square root of x. Not proportional. See, if we do anything to x other than multiply it, it's not proportional. Now these are totally legitimate functions and when you get in Algebra 2 you'll actually graph some of these and realize that these actually you can graph them and they look fine. Some of them are even lines. These are lines but they're not proportional and that's the key is they're not proportional. So now we're going to write an equation and use it to solve a problem. So here is a table of different gallons and miles that it took us to take a trip. So this is a proportional relationship um, and so we have to decide how do we write an equation and then how do we um, use that equation to solve a problem. So the first thing was we need to write an equation for this situation because remember mathematicians, we're pretty um, efficient and we do not like to just have tables like this. We like to have one equation that describes every instance that we could possibly think of. So we need to find k. Okay, so this would be, let's see, the first step. Find k. 
and we know k is our constant of proportionality, so we're needing to find k. Now remember, k is what we want divided by where we start, or y over x. So in this case, our constant of proportionality is 321.3 .3 divided by 21. And when I put that in the calculator, I get 15.3. And so what that means is in for one gallon, I can get 15.3 miles, right? Because that's what our constant of proportionality means. If there's one here, what did I multiply by? And we can even write that up here. So we multiplied by 15.3 to get across, okay? So now I have my K, and so you might be able to just fill it in, but a lot of people struggle. Where do I put the K? Do I put it with gallons or do I put it with miles? First thing you need to remember is X is always on the left, and we're always multiplying by X, okay? So you could just remember that we always multiply by whatever's on the left, never on the right. But I like to write, read it like a sentence. Gallons times what equals miles. So I'm just going to write this. So write a sentence, okay, so we're going to say gallons times 15.3 equals miles. I know that, right? Gallons times 15.3 equals miles. Now we're going to actually write that as an equation. So we have G times 15.3 equals M. And remember, mathematicians don't like it that way. So we're going to put it in the right order. Mathematicians really don't like the number after the variable like that. And they also like, usually, they like that M to be at the beginning. So instead, we're just going to put M equals, and do you see how M is still alone? So we're totally fine. Then we're going to put our constant of proportionality times G. And because it's in front, we don't even need to put multiplication. This is our equation. Okay, so now we've written our equation, and we remember that this is our constant of proportionality. Right, so that's K right there. And so this is K times X equals Y but we're going to use gallons and miles because it makes it easier for us to understand. Now imagine that our car holds 15 gallons and we want to figure out how far we can go um, on that. So let's like use the equation to solve a problem. If my car holds 15 gallons, how many miles can I go? Okay, so we, in this case, we know gallons and we don't know miles. So we're going to look at our equation and ask ourselves, what do we know and what do we not know, right? So I know gallons, I'm trying to find miles, okay? So what I know is what I'm going to plug in. So I'm going to say I'm still trying to find M, so I don't know M, 15.3, and now since I know gallons, I'm going to take out the G and I'm going to replace it with 15. Okay, and now all I have to do, since these are both on the same side of the paper, or same side of the equation, all I have to do is multiply that together. 15.3 times 15, we get M equals 229.5. So I can go 229.5 miles on 15 gallons. Okay, so that's how we use it that way to solve an equation, solve a problem. What if I know miles and I want to find gallons? Well, there's a couple different ways we can do that. Let's look at writing a whole different equation.
Actually, we're not going to write a whole different equation for this one. We'll write a whole different equation for one that's a good reciprocal. So what about y equals 15.3x, or we had m equals 15.3g, okay? Now what if we know miles and we're trying to find gallons? Well, all we do is plug in what we know, okay? So if I say I want to go on a trip somewhere and it's going to be 400 miles, how many gallons of gas am I going to use? Then I'm going to plug that in. So I plug in what I know which is 400 miles and then I'm going to solve for what I don't know. Okay, so what if we have 400 miles equals how much gas? That's what we're looking for. So what I do is I just solve now. I look at this and say, okay, I want to get G by itself, so I'm going to have to divide by 15.3. So I would take my calculator, 400 divided by 15.3 is 26.14 and I picked a number that doesn't really divide very evenly and that's okay because that's real world, right? So I get G equals, right, because this turns into 1, G equals 26.14, about 26.14 gallons. So I could say I'm going to use a little bit over 26 gallons. And this is super helpful because then I could figure out how much it was going to cost me to take that trip. Okay, so that's another example if you know this one and you want to find this one. Now remember we could have some that are um, two constants of proportionality for one situation. So this is where we can say if I'm going from one thing to the other and then back, right? So one of the examples we had was batteries and toys. So we have these toys and each toy uses two batteries. So if I make a table of toys and batteries, I can say if I have one toy, I need two batteries. If I have two toys, I need four batteries. If I have three toys, I need six batteries. Okay, we feel pretty good about that. But what if I'm looking the other way? What if I say batteries to toys? For every two batteries, I have one toy. For four batteries, I could use two toys. For six batteries, I could use three toys, okay? So now I'm looking at, there's two different constants of proportionality here, right? There's one that says toys to batteries and one that says batteries to toys. So I would say T times what? Equals B. And I would say, well, T times 2 equals B. And we'd rewrite that as B equals 2T. And the way we would say this is B is proportional to T. Okay? B is proportional to T. And oftentimes they'll ask you, they'll kind of tell you if what gives me B if I know t, or what um, what equation gives me b with any known number of t. Okay, and then let's ask ourselves the other one. b times what equals t? Well, b times, that would be b times one half equals t. And we're going to rewrite that as t equals one half b, or we could write it as t equals b divided by two because they're the same thing, right? So this would be t is proportional to b, or it would say given any number of batteries, write an equation that tells us the number of toys we could use. Now here's what's helpful is if they're this way, if you're given toys, you could use this. This. If I have 10 toys, how many batteries will I need? Well, 10 times 2 is 20. Or if they say, I have 35 batteries, let's say 36 because that <laughs> divides evenly. I have 36 batteries. How many toys can I use with 36 batteries? Well, I'd say 36 times 1 half is 18, so I could get 18 toys. So that's how we use these to solve different equations. And you notice that 
that the K is reciprocal. Do that in purple. Um, K is the reciprocal 1 over K. So we have here the constant of proportionality is 2. And then when we flip the two variables, now our constant of proportionality is 1 half. So there you go. That's writing proportional equations in a nutshell.